So now we will see transfer vibration. So far we have dealt with the longitudinal vibration. So what is the basic difference? So for example, if I consider you know, uh, you know spring mass system, simple spring mass system, this is the M1. And if the vibrations are happening along the length of the spring, so in the previous case we have taken vibration you know in this direction it's a moving this direction and this direction so this is you know vibrations are along the length of the spring then in that case we are calling this as a longitudinal vibrations but whereas instead of you know in the length of the direction if the vibrations are you know um, from the uh, to the top and to the bottom then the vibration is perpendicular to the length of the spring so in this case this is a called as a transverse of vibrations and uh, at the end we have a mass here mass are uh, we can say it's a force acting in the downward direction so if i give a small perturbation or the disturbance to this mass m it will vibrate uh, like this you know to the bottom and to the top so in this case this is uh, undergoing the transverse vibration and uh, before giving any initial perturbation it will it will be in the equilibrium position because and when it is in the equilibrium position it will be bent like this little bit because because of the mass that is there at the end of the and uh, this uh, you know cantilever and uh, this you know the, this is called as the initial initial displacement or the initial elongation in the downward direction and here m because of this uh, mg and uh, the stiffness of this uh, cantilever is uh, trying to oppose this uh, you know initial displacement so let's say the stiffness is k stiffness of this particular rod is a k then it's opposing in this direction so it's uh, acting uh, in the upward direction and uh, what is this force and stiffness force are the spring force we have already seen in the in case of a longitudinal vibration so here also the same formula can be applicable so the stiffness force is k into delta so here if i take this you know mass at the equilibrium position this so stiffness force is acting in the upward direction and inertia force is acting in the downward direction and if i equate these two so what happens so k delta equal to m into g or k by m equal to g by delta so this is a important equation that we need to remember and uh, now what i did is i have a given initial perturbation x so because of that initial perturbation what happens so this will given an initial perturbation x in this uh, downward direction x in the downward direction so because of this one this mass is moving or uh, vibrating with an acceleration so uh, here in the new position i have taken the mass here and uh, this mass is having a uh, m into x double dot this is the inertia force because of the acceleration and uh, we have already one more inertial force that is due to the you know gravity and uh, here the spring which is uh, opposing the motion already in the initial position or uh, when the system is at the equilibrium position it's already having the initial displacement delta and now we have given additional displacement x so the total stiffness force is uh, delta plus x that is acting in the upward direction so if i if i can recollect from the you know previous sessions where f equal to m a from the newton second law so here what is the m a this is a m x double dot that is a dynamic force here actually so here we are now equating dynamic force to the static force that equal to actually here this is acting in the downward direction so whichever force is acting in the downward direction would be considered as a positive and remaining would be considered as a negative so here this one is uh, acting in the upward direction so this is a negative one but whereas mg is uh, acting in the downward direction so this would be positive so here mg minus k into delta plus x but we know mg equal to k delta so it will you know gets cancelled so here we have a k into x 
so finally we'll get to m x double dot plus k x equal to zero so if you observe this equation is exactly you know the same equation that we derived in the longitudinal vibrations and what is the omega n here omega n again here equal to the k by m but uh, this k by m again can be written from the equation one so here omega n again can be written as a square root of g by delta so here in this case most of the cases it's a very easier to find out the value of delta than the value of k so these are the formulas for the deflections in a different beams and that are subjected to different types of load so the first one is simply supported beam so uh, simply supported beam is uh, like this so when the board hand is simply supported like this so first case is the at a midpoint so when f is uh, you know applied at midpoint here in this case this is the w this is in a newton actually so it's applied you know at the midpoint so when it is applied at the midpoint this is a deflection this uh, we already derived you know when we talked you know del the strength of materials so here this is the formula and uh, he remember that uh, this w is not in the kg but uh, it's in a newton and uh, when the this you know its so load is uh, distributed you know all along the length like this so again this is the formula and here this is a you know small w so the small w is uh, in terms of newton per length so this uh, newton per length so this is a uh, distributed all over the length so that's why it's a uh, newton per length and then moment so here in this case we applied moment like this and uh, at the end here also moment like this so in that case this is the formula for the deflection and uh, in case of a cantilever so this is a cantilever and the first case is a force at the end like this so this is a w and this is a formula for this one and uh, instead of this one this is a distributed like this all over the length so in that case this is the formula and uh, this is a small w and this uh, unit is a uh, newton per uh, you know meter that is a uh, newton per length actually again and uh, moment we applied moment like this in that case this is the formula and the next one is a fixed beam so here uh, in start this one you know uh, here in the cantilever one end is a free one so in start both ends are a fixed one here so that is called as a fixed beam and uh, point load at at the mid so applied like this in this case so in that case this is the formula and we need to remember this one this is a, you know very often come in our problems comes in our problems because whenever we consider whenever we consider any you know shaft we have, you know, uh, between the bearings then it should be either you know um, generalized to the simply supported or to the fixed beam so how we take the at call whether it's a fixed or the simply supported based on the length of the shaft if the length of the shaft is very high then it would be generally considered as a simply supported and if the length of the shaft between the bearings is very low then it would be considered as a fixed one that again we will see when we deal with the problems and again the distributed one this is a formula and here we need to identify this is a you know small w we will take an example and see how to calculate omega n so for example i have taken a cantilever beam so what is the delta delta for this case is delta equal to w l cube by 3 ei so here w is given and the length is given from the diagram and what is this one eng's modulus this is also given in the problem because eng's modulus is depending on the type of material that is made up of this uh, you know um, type of material that used for this cantilever and uh, here one more thing that we need to identify is the i this is a moment of inertia so we need to find out this uh, you know um, area moment of inertia so how to find out this area moment of inertia so this is the length actually here in this diagram we are uh, seeing the cantilever being uh, you know along the length but if you see from this direction then we can see the shape of this cross section of the 
this cantilever beam for example if it is a circular it would be like this if you see if you view from this direction and if it is a rectangular or a, you know uh, something like a square it would be like this and uh, we already know the concept of a neutral axis so a neutral axis is uh, like this here also neutral axis is like this so the i or moment of inertia should be calculated you know about this uh, neutral axis so different you know formulas for the different shapes have given already in the strength of materials so we need to make use of those formulas to calculate this i and after calculating this i we need to substitute in this uh, equation 